Welcome to Vlad TV. We got a special guest in the building today, Tyron Turner. What's up, man? What's up, man? How y'all doing, man? <laughs> what good, up? good, good. It's good to see you, brother. You looking young. You're looking in shape. You're hey. looking good over there. Hey, man, that's what it's about, man. Just staying ready. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. We got a lot going on in the world today. And, um, you know, I definitely want to get your thoughts on some of these things that are making headlines. So, again, welcome to Vlad TV. Thank you for having me, man. Absolutely. Um, Virgil Ablo, you familiar? Um, designer. Designer. With, 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 uh, black designer used to work for uh, Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton, yeah. right? Yeah. He really broke, broke the um, glass ceilings for black designers. Yes, um, exactly. Huge within the celebrity designing world. This is a man who, obviously, we know... Um, many of the black designers, um, Sean Puffy Combs with, with Sean John, um, uh, Damon John with, with Fubu and so many of the other guys, but he really broke the glass right. ceilings as pertains to um, black designers. Wonder if all of your years um, in Hollywood and in your travels, um, have you ever had a chance to meet him and any interactions with him? Never. Never. Really? I, I actually never met him. Um... But I heard a lot of great things about him, and um, you know, what I mean, he's he's definitely uh like a pioneer in our culture, you know, you know what I mean, and I respect that. Yeah. So again, um, rest in peace to Virgil. Um, Atheon Crockett. Yes. You familiar? Yes. You know, I believe you guys had a chance to work together. Is that is yeah, that correct? We, um, it, he had a um a television show that I wrote on with me, him, Jamie Foxx. Uh, and um, uh, a few other people, uh, Johnny Mac, some just some, you know, we wrote on a television show called the. Uh, it was the Avion Crockett show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he recently called out a Karen who um, stormed on stage during one of his sets. Right. You know, there's a lot going on in the world, especially with the Karens out there. Many of them um, are getting it just due and being called out for their um, behavior and white privilege, you know, you working with him, is this within the personality or the man that you know who would stop his show and call out a Karen for storming on stage? Atheon Crockett is a, is a, is a, it's right up his character. Like he's like, he's very uh, spontaneous. He's very, um, uh, uh, what you call, um, very witty. So for him to do that, I like I knew that he he he's good with ad libbing and knowing how to play off a off a uh, off a drama. So I knew that that's something he could use to his advantage and put in and put inside the show. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean he definitely didn't hold back. And, right. Um, you know it was it was something that made the news and you know you saw that quick wit um, that you just spoke about with him. Yeah. You know come through. You know, speaking of quick wit. Dave Chappelle. Mm. <laughs> this is a guy who's making big headlines these days. Um, you know, and he's making big headlines because he's challenging the establishment. Right. He's challenging the world right now. Right. His ability to have freedom of speech. Right. Um, what do you think about the whole Dave Chappelle getting canceled um over some of the trans? comments that he made during his Netflix special. I feel like um I feel like America needs to understand that the world is realistic and sometimes we sometimes if the the uh the truth can hurt and sometimes we just want to, you know, if you show a black man getting choked and killed, you know what I'm saying? We we didn't cancel the, uh, the police wasn't canceled. You feel me? It's reality. We have to we have to adjust to reality. And what some of the things Dave Chappelle was saying, that see, comedy comes from hurt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you if you it's not like we don't as a comedian, he doesn't talk about himself. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like I feel like him challenging us. I feel like it's it's great because you have to at some point you 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 have to have freedom of speech. You know, Donald Trump yeah. says what he wanna say. Uh, all day, every day, and and literally hasn't been canceled yet. Yeah, it's like, come on, like why cancel, cancel for what? What did he? What did he? What people? 
people got to learn how to laugh again. People got to learn how to say, there's a reason why I say, there's a reason why they say it's a joke. Like, it's not real. <laughs> you know, but the funniest jokes tend to come out of reality. Um, first and foremost, did you have a chance to watch that Netflix special? Yes, I did. You know, I watched it. And although Dave Chappelle was being Dave Chappelle and he was very raw, he, I really got the sense that he had an affinity for that community. Right. It wasn't like he was just ragging on them. He was talking about he respects them. He had a great friend who was trans and um, killed himself and how he is now, you know, doing his part for the person's daughter. Right. It, it didn't come off like he was just slamming this community. You know, he was telling jokes which were based in reality, but it wasn't hate from my part. I, I don't know. Did it come off the same way to you? It didn't. No, it didn't come off like hate to me. It came off like it was. It was. It was. It was real. It was funny. It was. It was challenging. It was. It was to say like, hey man, like enough is enough. Y'all been everybody been curving their jokes, and for the for the last four or five years, fuck it. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like it, it is what it is. Like and 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 and. Everybody is like everybody just gotta take a step back and be like, you know what, man? Let's we everybody gotta relax. We 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 like the world is we we need laughter, but we can't get laughter if we don't joke about what the pain is. All right, let me ask you something. You had a you you had a role in a movie called Ghetto Tales, starring Boosie and, and Webby. Yes. Uh, you got any story? Boosie, he's a regular on Vlad TV, and he's always outspoken. Another person who speaks his mind. Very, very unfiltered. Right. You got any stories of uh, Boosie while filming? No, not really. Just, just, um, just a, uh, just very cool, very cool guy, very down to earth. Um, he used to always have these, um, these, uh, what's those cars? He had the, uh, Matt, what, what's the, he was just like, he st still, he still lived in, like, he still was, connected to the hood like it wasn't like he he was like in these mansions he had money he had cars he had all that but he was connected like to the street you know what i'm saying and he was cool and he was respectful and he was uh he was um cool to work with and webby was cool to work with they was just they were just cool they was happy to, that that they worked with me and i was like i was happy to work with them it was like we were fans of each other it was just it was just cool nothing weird you know what i'm saying i found out that he had a uh, uh, diabetes or something. That was the only thing I, I uh, knew that he had mm -hmm. diabetes or something or whatever. Uh, that was the only weird thing I think I uh, probably uh, I was like, damn, hockey, you got too young to have. I didn't know. I'm like, man, he's like young to have diabetes. I never seen that before. I knew my grandmama had it, so I didn't even know diabetes even existed within like younger like that. You know what I mean? It, it, him and Lil Nas X been going back and forth. Are you familiar? Mm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. You know, what is your thoughts on... I mean, that is the most unlikely set of people. I, I don't even know how each one of them got on each other's radar because that's, that's such an unlikely um, set of people to, to be going right. back and forth with each other. So what's your thoughts on Boosie's statement about the, the gay community? Okay, can you, can you re-say what he said about the gay... What, what, what's his stance on the gay community? Uh, basically he used, uh, uh, a gay slur, used the word faggot. Um, there was some offense taken by right. Lil Nas X, if I can remember. Um, oh God, gay, I had gay, like, I'm not, I don't have gay phobia, so it doesn't bother me, but, you know, I had, I got, I had, uh, a, a cousin that was gay, um, I just feel like there you go again, uh, freedom of freedom of speech. It's like that's how Boosie felt. Like if he, are you supposed to get in trouble for lying? I thought lying is a sin. <laughs> if you can, so we, are we in a world where if you tell the truth, you're being punished, or or if you lie, you're pun, or or you're uh, you're being punished. 
So if I go if I go rob a liquor store and say I didn't do it, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But if I did, if so if but if I did, if I tell the truth, I'm I'm I'm, I'm it's like you it, there's no win. It's like what are y'all? He didn't he did he what did he what okay tell me that what did he what did Boosie actually lie about? So I, I guess I guess I guess the word the word faggot is, is the wrong word to use, right? Now correct. Now I now let me explain. Let me, the word the word fag to me ain't ain't a homosexual to me. The word fag is just sometimes it it can, it's just like the word nigga. Like oh man man you man that was some fag she did my nigga like it's kind of more like. That was some dumb shit, or that was like, man, you that was some weak kind of. It ain't always like a fag meaning like somebody in your booty. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> every everybody take the words and use them how they feel like the person was using them. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes it don't be like that. That's why we can call each other niggas and we don't really take it offensive. You know what I'm saying? But when somebody say nigger, it makes you feel weird. Yeah, yeah. You know, in that same movie, Ghetto Tales. It also starred Mike Epps and Hoops. Right. You get any interaction with either one of them? Well, I was, I was, uh, Hoops, we, she played my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So we were just like, uh, you know, made out in, on, on, on the, in the, um, in one of the scenes or whatever. It was cool. She reminded me, I'm gonna be honest, she kind of reminded me a lot of Jada. Really? And I thought she was a pretty good actress too, if she would have pursued it and, and kind of uh, did it. I thought she was natural, actually. Why? Why does she remind you of Jada? In which way? Her, her sex appeal and charismatic. I felt like she was sexy. I felt like she was charismatic. I felt like the the camera loved her. I just think she didn't understand what she had. To me, like and really, like I felt like she could have been like, you got the Laurel London's and all. Like why not? She was. I felt like she could. She had something. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And Mike Epps, we yeah. did something else with my. I did. I just finished the movie with Mike Epps. I made us out on um, Stars right now. What's the name of it? House Next Door. Me, and Mike Epps, so Cat Williams. Oh, that that must be hilarious. <laughs> it's 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 a dope film, man. Um, speaking of another film, you you play play Big Head Rico mm. in Belly, right? <laughs> you know. The star of Belly, um, hip hop legend, hip hop icon, DMX, recently passed. What's your thoughts on, you know, DMX, the way his life turned out um, since Belly? We we were just talking about people um, becoming actors, and and this guy was a natural. He 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 was an incredible, phenomenal rapper. But when he got on that set to act, he was just as explosive. Um, you know, what is your thoughts just even hearing the DMX, somebody who's been with us for so many years, somebody who's made so many incredible number one hits, you know, this is a man who passed. And that yeah, that 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 actually shocked me when I because when I DMX reminds me of like a he's like a he was like a, to me he was like a East Coast Tupac to me like you know that's the kind of energy that that he gave so when he passed away I met him when we we did we did Belly we jumped in the car and we drove around New York for like two or three hours just listening to all kind of music I was asking him questions picking his brain he was I was just like because I knew that. He was next, so he so 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 being in the car with him, I'm just like, man, do you, you 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 know you next, he, but he was just he was just he was just straight humble and like, yeah yeah, what well, what about this song? And we listening, and his one of his favorite songs was uh by Jocelyn, somebody else's guy. I don't know if you know that song. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, Classic. so somebody else's guy. Like I remember him. That was one of his uh, favorite songs. Um, his one of his favorite rappers was Scarface, um, and he just he loved music. That's what I would. He loved music. We like to listen to music for like an hour, an hour, like two hours straight. And um, nah, man, that 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 messed me up because it was just like, damn, like 
here we are. We fight to get these moments in life. And God is God is not a groupie. Like God will come get you. It don't matter who you are. You know what I mean? So you have to prepare to 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 live. Like it's not, you gotta play defense. You can't just, hey, let me, let me eat right. Let me, let me, I can't intake all these drugs. You gotta really prepare, man. Cause look, we losing people so fast. Prince, we lost Prince, we lost Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson on a with the with with the stuff he was using, Prince riding to the to the to the uh, Walmart trying to get some pills to get his shit together. It shit got, it shit just went, it shit just went bananas. It's like we can't even live past 50, 50 no more. Yeah, I mean, so many of our icons, uh, they're leaving way too early, way too. And you, you know, <laughs> speaking of leaving way too early, it, it's it's common knowledge that DMX, um, his driving ability was different, meaning. <laughs> <laughs> you said you spent two hours driving him around the city with DMX. Speaking of losing somebody too early, you could have been lost too early. Like DMX, yeah, I, he, he yeah, wasn't known for for have great ability behind the wheel. Yeah, it's just like it's one of those things to where you just you you. I'm. It's kind of thing where you know somebody driving and you just block it out. You tell you listen to music <laughs> and you just kind of like everything. You, just, you don't want you. You don't never want. The motherfucker next to you to think you scared of their driving, so you just you you you, you like just kind of like <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> yo for real talk. Was you scared to death in that? Because I used to do like ninety, going from one corner to the other corner. I felt okay. I wasn't. It was. I wasn't that. I don't think he was really doing that at that time. Got you, but but he was speeding. But it's New York, so I always think New York people drive different, and I just think that it's just how it works. It just I think New York people work. I I've never seen a car crash in New York. Actually, that's weird. I I I've never seen cars crash in New. I, you may have, but in L. A. It's all you see accidents on a freeway. But New York, they so I've never seen an accident out there. Wow, you seen an accident in New York? I lived in New York my whole life. Of course, I see. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of rappers turned actors, right? Um, you had a classic scene with Method Man. Mm. Another legend in the rap community. Yes. Um, how do you feel personally watching um, Meth over the years? How do you feel about his evolution as an actor? I think I'm gonna be honest with you. I just felt like Method Man is. Uh, I'm I'm actually proud of him. Actually, like he, I think he's dope. Like he's he. Not only is he dope, but he's he he um he's transitioned and really started taking this shit serious. Got a suit on, been a lawyer. Like he's really taking it serious. Like and he's doing a great job at it. And he's in shape. He's taking his health serious. Like it's like he just he he figured it out. And I'm and I'm I'm I'm. I'm I'm actually proud. Like I think he I think he's dope. I think I think he has charisma on screen. I think he um I think he I think he's gonna go far because he's finally, I think, taking it serious and you can tell with his work. You have any stories with him on set? Did y'all get a um chance to to really spend time and just connect and bond off camera? Nah, not not, not well, we, well me and Meth, we we know we 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 know each other. Um, it's just more of just uh just you just the energy of just two cool two cool dudes, you know what I'm saying? It's just like what's up T? What's up, meth? Like it's just that combat, just that. Nothing like out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. Um, you had a chance to bring back Big Head Rico and meet the blacks. Yes. Uh, what was your thoughts when they asked you to reprise that role? Was you shocked? Um well, it's not the so Big Head Rico, I didn't even know that he was gonna be a be that have that kind of impact. Really? I didn't. It was a it was all an accident because I originally was supposed to be in Belly as the lead character. Hype Williams said, Hey man, I we we got this upcoming rap this upcoming rapper his name is DMX you know um it's a, it's a New York film I, I, we're gonna go this direction but I got something I, but I but you could do something else and I'm like okay 
So the Rico character was a character that we kind of, I kind of made up because I was mad that I didn't have a lead role being young. So I'm like, man, I really want the lead role, man. They, I, not, Rico, sni okay, man, the, the, give me, I, I, give me a banana, some wig. I'm just he a hater. Cool, all right, give me banana wig or whatever. So I'm just, I'm trying to mess the story. I'm trying to mess the character up because I'm just irritated. I'm eating the banana. Oh, no, like I'm just, I'm thinking I'm fucking the movie up. <laughs> Man, so they screened you had... that. They screened that shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they the, the crowd loved him. I said, "Huh?" Spike Lee seen me and bust a U turn and said, "My God, you killed it." Keenan Ivory Wayne said that was one of the most genius things he's seen. These are I I, I, I couldn't believe it. Wow. So you really had input in bringing that character just can't the, you can't, the whole. How you gonna tell somebody to eat a banana? How could they write that? <laughs> how can you write somebody eating a banana smacking and saying, "I don't like that. I'm gonna drop that. I don't like that." Like you can't teach that. Yeah. But you never know. You never know when the moments are gonna come. You never know. In that same movie, Meet the Blacks, it, it obviously is featuring Mike Epps, another ch opportunity for you to work with him. Uh, Mike Tyson, Paul Mooney, Charlie Murphy, Snoop Dogg was in it, Lil, Lil Duvall. Big cast, a lot of big names. Right. Charlie Murphy, another one, going too soon. You know, did you have an opportunity to spend time because this guy was hilarious? So and I think a so lot me, of so 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 meet the blacks. There's two of them, right? So the house next door. I, I never did the uh, the movie with Charlie Mack. I did the house next door, which is meet the blacks too. So which is what had Cat Williams, Mike Epps, Lil Duvall, um, Cliff Powell, uh, and Mike Mike Epps, Cat Williams, Lil Duvall, and all those guys. So my experience with those guys. I never I I met Char Charlie um Murphy uh though and he was very you know funny as you know Eddie Murphy twin shit you have to be funny um but um as far as Mike Epps and all those guys Mike Epps was was so cool and very like hey man like what you trying to do like very we we listened to we we battled music all day he would come with his with, with his with his uh uh um uh uh, what what you call it? Uh, Beverly, Frankie Beverly and all that stuff. And then I hit mm -hmm. him with the uh, with the Isley Brothers. He'd come with like we were just battling. Like he played five or six songs. Then I, what you know about this? All on the set. Gr just just Damn. just yeah, just a great time. Cat Williams uh, was was the uh, ultimate professional. Knew his lines very killed it. Um, uh, bought everybody like uh, special food that wasn't. Uh, from the caterers, just kind of like just to show us what uh certain kind of food was. Like he was just, it was just cool, man. It it, it was cool, man. Uh, I had a great time. Little Duvall, um, they always thought he was related to me. Yeah, yeah. They always like, yeah, little mother, little <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm bigger than that little nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, in Meet the Blacks, um, Big Hair Rico is yeah. a snitch. Yes, he's a snitch. Um. What would Big Hair Rico have to say about Takashi Six Nine snitching, in your opinion? It's funny you say that, cause Rico is the alter ego, and Rico is kind of pissed at Takashi Six Nine because he's like, because in Rico eyes, he ain't he he not the real a real snitch like that. Like he, like Rico is to say, I'll tell on you in your face kind of snitch. Like, I'm up in your face. That's why the, the the neighborhood and the hood loved him because he was just, he you knew where he was coming from. Whereas Takashi 6 9 is was kind of like, he he went behind people back and, and, and started talking. He wasn't an upfront snitch. So Rico would say, you, you, even the, you, you not the, you not a true snitch like me. He would have a problem with Takashi 6 9 but I, but Rico would do a song with him. <laughs> Rico would do a song yeah, that, with him? Yeah, he'd do a song with him. 
You know, th these days, I don't, I mean, you tell me, I mean, snitching, it, it seems like everybody's doing it these days. It ain't, it ain't, everybody talk down on snitching, but when, when stuff really hits the fan, um, you know, people talk. We all, we, we all watch the first 48. We, you know, people once, Yeah, once that, talk. Co once they act for that Coke can, once that Coke can come in, when, when the dude, when the, when they act for that Coca-Cola, you know he finna start talking. <laughs> soon as the Coke, soon as the Coke come in and I said, there it go. <laughs> I didn't know what you, I didn't know where you were going with that. You said they asked for the Coke can. So soon as that Coke can come on, that, that's it. That's it. They, they, they tell you everything. So this is my take on snitching. The problem with, they giving, it's different. They giving, they giving people 75, 75 years and 800 years. They, this is how they talking to the kid. They like, look, you're facing 300 years. That's how they talking to the kids now. Back in the day, it was like you facing 10 years. You know, it was like something normal, right? Like facing 10, 15, whatever. Uh, but we've never heard 300 years before. So my thing is this. I, I don't, I'm not a snitch, but I don't put myself in snitch situations. Yeah, I mean, um. Don't do the, don't do the time if you can't do the crime. That's the that's the whole key. I'm not gonna put myself in that position, cause nobody, like, if somebody if somebody tells somebody you facing 300 years, I don't care what anybody says. You're gonna at least take a deep breath. You may not tell, but you're gonna at least <laughs> you're gonna at least say, Whew, right? You got Whew. you gotta say you gotta take a deep breath at least. Nah. You, you, you tell somebody they facing those types of numbers <laughs> that if they died and came back two, three more times, they would still be locked up. You know, it's hard not to at least entertain the idea of telling these people what they want to hear. But you ain't supposed to put yourself in that that's position what I, to begin with. And, and And that's all I'm saying. And when you... And when you um, the thing about it is like, when you when you die, nobody ever think about that shit no more. Well, I don't know how many snitches there is in the world. <laughs> like, so it's like, I guess some people just feel like, well, who am I trying to impress? Is it ego? Like, think about like, is it an ego that you don't have? So somebody said you got three hundred years, and they say, but if you but if you but if you say something, you got six months in probation. Like, is it a is it ego? And you care about what other people think, or is it like mm, shit? That's something that you gotta really, you gotta think about that. Look, if they giving you three hundred years and they say if you if you if if you if you talk, you got six months. You at least gotta take a deep breath. You just gotta take a deep breath. You you mentioned earlier you tried out um, for the leading role in Boys in the Hood. Yes, as Trey. Yeah, didn't didn't get the part. No. Um, how did that audition go? But um, John Singleton said uh, I had the uh, I had the role. I went in there. I killed it. I know that. I felt it. Uh, didn't get it. Seen it. Uh, seen it on the um, commercials and shit. I was depressed. I was like, wow. I, I knew it was gonna be big. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I'm looking at it on TV. Rule number three. Don't trust nobody. I'm like, oh <laughs> damn. That was supposed to be me. <laughs> and so then. Like a um, I was bitter for that. I was a bitter for. I was bitter about that. You know what I mean? And um, it's funny that I never, I never even, I never even worked with John Singer uh, ever, and which I thought was weird. Like how you a, a a black a black actor in the culture, and you never work with your you never work with your heroes, never work with John Singleton, never work with Spike Lee. Spike Lee seen me and said he loved me. Never worked with Spike Lee. Um, worked with the Hughes brothers. They believed in me. Gave me my gave me a shot. But like it's like, hey man, like they. they I feel like black directors were in competition with each other. Yeah.
Um, I've heard that. I've heard that it's it, it's definitely at one point. It's gotten better over the years. Yeah. But at one point, many of them were in competition with one another. Yeah. So instead of instead of using somebody that you know is dope, you try to go make your you. I'm just gonna give. I'm just gonna go get my own. You know what I mean? Instead of just you know. I don't even think Lorenz ever worked with John Singleton or any of those. Like, how do you have these iconic guys, Lorenz Tate, uh, like all these guys, and you have filmmakers out here that that don't don't they, well, you don't you don't see Lorenz Tate, <laughs> boy man. You got Wood Harris and Mackay fight like you got some, huh? <laughs> Come on, man. Let me ask you. As an actor, yes, because you said you knew that was going to be a hit. As an actor, you can really read a script and say that this is going to be a hit. I got to be part of this because just from what I'm reading on these pages, it's going to translate into something incredible on screen. It well, when you what, you know something's a hit when you. When you see the dailies, so when I said I knew Boys in the Hood was gonna be a hit, I knew it was a hit when I heard the the song come on on the TV when it said "How to Survive in South Central." I said, "Oh shit, the whole world gonna go see that." That could have been yep. "How to Survive in South Central." That that L.A. Crenshaw, all that the world wanted to know how to survive in South Central. You know what I mean? So now with Menace. Uh, when the um, I knew that was gonna be a hit when we when they had the screening, and um, as soon as me and Lorenz Tate character walked into the uh, liquor store, and we walked in, and I'm in the audience, and I'm in the back, and the audience is, they, they went, I've never heard that before. They start cheering, crying, getting that's messed. I feel sorry for your mother. It, 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 the whole ooh, it was. It, I said, "Oh my God!" My, my, my I said, it's, "I said, I, I walked out." I said, "It's over." I knew it was so like, that that you moment. Know, you knew I'm part of something epic. I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm yeah. Gonna... What I didn't, I, what I didn't know is that it would be this iconic. I didn't know that. I just knew it was gonna be a. I, I said, I said, "Ooh!" I knew this. Is what I knew. I said, "Oh, Boys and Hood is in trouble." That's my real thought. I said, "It's in trouble." All right, speaking of Boys in the Hood, um, right. Vlad recently interviewed Cuba's brother, his younger brother, Omar Gooden. Yes. I want to show you a clip. Okay. That he, um, a clip when Vlad asked him about you auditioning for the lead role. Okay. And then in 1991, mm -hmm. Boys in the Hood comes out. Yeah. Starring your brother. Yes, sir. Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah. What's interesting is that uh, I interviewed Tyron Turner. Nice. You know, who played Kane in Minnesota Society. And he actually auditioned for that same role. Did he really? And he even did like a whole like reenactment <laughs> of, of Cuba Gooding's, uh, you know, like <laughs> that is the part when he was like, you know, comes home, starts punching. And he the starts punching. And okay. I thought he improv that too. So that's amazing that he had that. Story. Hold on. I'll actually show you. Let me, see, <laughs> let me see if I can pull this up. He said that was in the audition, huh? Got it. So there's Tyron Turner talking about his audition for Boys in the Hood. Mm -mm. You actually tried out for Boys in the Hood. I tried out for Boys in the Hood. I did the whole spiel, went in there, met John Singleton. You know, I, I remember like yesterday, I, I went in there and I, it was the scene where, uh, you know, when uh, Cuba got it, he got on the turn. Damn, baby. Damn, okay. At you least we know, right now there. we know why he didn't get the role. <laughs> you put me right into that scene <laughs> right evident. there. And I did that whole little thing and John Singleton was like. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He's such a nut. Ah, I was like, yeah, well, that would have been easy to cast. I get it. I get it. But the next, anybody else out there? Send in Cuba. So, so what's your reaction on, um, you know, just watching Cuba Gooden's reaction to you auditioning that scene that his brother made famous? I mean, Omar Gooden. So. So I was trying to I was trying to see the re, the actual reaction. Was, was he was he saying that I was he, he was he saying like uh that was funny like T crazy kind of thing? It, it, that's what it felt like. Yeah. Um. I mean, I think he probably felt like shit. He riding with his brother. <laughs> <laughs> like 
You know what I mean? And 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 looking at the looking at the movie, it was perfectly cast for Cuba. Cause Kane was perfectly cast. Like, look, everybody got what they wanted out of it. He's fine with Trey, with the trade, with the with the Trey character. I'm satisfied with the, what what Tyron did with, with with Kane. So everything happened organically how it was supposed to happen. Looking back on it, that was for that was for Cuba. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think both of you killed those roles respectively. Yeah. And, you know, it's a big part of why those films, in addition to obviously the other great actors um, in the writing and the directing, but these are now iconic films, um, even beyond our own community. Right. For over 20 years, you worked behind the scenes, which I didn't know... Um, writing comedy material for close friends like Jamie Foxx. Right. Uh, I didn't realize you and Jamie Foxx... How far back do you and Jamie Foxx go? 20, like 25-something years. Yeah? Yeah. Um, since probably like uh, from in, li like in Living Color. Yeah. So, the, the Jamie, the, the, J Jamie uh, is, a, um, is a... We all know like uh, a very talented you know, actor or whatever, and um, very, very, very funny. And so um, he was like, he 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 knew how funny I was. He was like, man, shit, you, you funny than you, you funny. And so we just used to chop it up, write jokes together, drive around and write jokes or whatever. And then one time he was like, um, he was working on his Unpredictable tour and we sat down, we, we, we drove around and like, I, I wrote, Probably like he'll tell you. I wrote like uh, me and him. You know what I'm saying. We wrote. I wrote a lot of a, a lot of his his jokes for his uh his unpredictable tour. Do you think of yourself as a comedian? Do, do you look at yourself that way? Because when most people see Tyrant Turner, they see actor. Uh, you know, somebody who takes serious roles. Obviously, you've done things like Meet the Blacks, which was which was hilarious, but Knowing that you wrote that much um, of that unpredictable tour, do you, when you look at yourself, do you think comedian or do you just think it's, you know, I just do a little bit of, of everything? I, first of all, I'm funny as hell, that's for sure. But <laughs> the thing, the thing was, I wanted to be a comedian at first. I mm. wanted to, that's, I, I thought I was funny. I was a class clown. I was funny. Menace came and then somebody sold me on being a damn sex symbol. <laughs> so then I'm trying to, <laughs> like, I'm trying to not be so damn funny now. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, shit, these girls like these lips and shit. Let me just, let me just kind of just be on some, some leading man kind of that. But I always love to be funny. I always, I, I love, I love, I love comedy, but. I was I'm I, I'm I'm versatile. So people that know me for real, they're gonna say, "Oh, tiring, hilarious." But if you don't, if you don't, that's why when I did House Next Door, like you kind of get a chance to see me being different. You know what I mean? So you can say, "Oh, this nigga, he got," you know what I mean? I got comedy timing as well. Yeah, I mean, even you said you go back with with Jamie Foxx about twenty five years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, like, how did he even discover? You know, just just how did he discover like? Because, How did he know? Yeah, that you had this He's kind a of comedic instinct. Because, 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 com let, let me explain something to you. And Dave Chappelle will tell you this. Before Dave Chappelle made it, we was in a limousine. We bagged on each other for two hours straight. Me and Dave Chappelle. This is on the record. This is real. And, and you were able to hold your own with the Dave Chappelle. Ask Dave. For two hours. Ever, we bagged for two. Uh, people, we bagged for two hours. Dave Chappelle. I'm t I'm this was the half this was right before the half baked Chappelle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we was in yeah, we bagged on each other for like two we we bagged on each other for like two hours straight, nonstop. Yeah, he'll tell you. Yeah, you clearly you have comedic instincts. Like if you can hold your own with Dave Chappelle for two straight hours, I think people would not know this side of you. Yeah, that because yeah. when it right, but but people that know me, like Jamie, Jamie, if you see Jamie, you ask him, is Tyron funny? He, hysterical. Like we all, 
comedy is is where that's what we that's where it's, all I listened to was Richard Pryor and uh, Eddie Murphy coming up. Minister Society. I didn't live in color first. Ken, Kenan Ivory gave me my first job on Living Color first. I didn't live in color before I did anything. I did an episode in Living Color. Kenan Ivory had uh, hired me. So why not at some point in your career, why didn't you just go and start doing stand-up and really going hard? Because this seems like something that just comes natural to you. Because I felt like I felt like it was it, it probably would it would could be backwards. I, I don't I don't know. I felt like I, I I took the wrong route, so I was just gonna finish it the way that people saw it. I, in a sense, you know what I mean. It's like look at Kevin Hart, right? He did fatherhood, dramatic, right? We all we all are funny, but we all have a sense of like we can be real as well. You know what I mean? Look at Tom Hanks. Look at look Jamie was was Wanda. He won an Oscar for Ray. This is what I'm trying to tell you. A lot of a lot of people that are comedians really are dramatic. There a lot of comedians really can go. Look at Chris Tucker and um their presidents. Natural. Yeah. yeah. Smoking the smoking the cigarette. Just just doing his thing. And I think that's the misconception. I think I think some I think we we're entertainers and we can do a lot, but we just limit ourselves because we we scared of what people think. That's why I start singing and shit. I'll sing. If you watch my lives, I'll sing. I do it all. Look at Jamie sing. Chris Tucker can uh, sing a little bit. Um, uh, Eddie Griffith can sing a little bit. Sammy Tommy Davidson. Do you notice how everybody, most comedians, can they be singing and doing all kind of stuff? Uh, you and Jamie, obviously, you guys share a lot of history, right? And you joined Jamie Foxx and, and Stephen Jackson when they spoke out. On the um, Minneapolis, they spoke out on the whole George Floyd thing in Minneapolis. Uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, our condolences to George Floyd's family. But how did the George Floyd death affect you? And why did you feel the need to really step up when those guys stepped up to speak out? Because this was the... This was the were, this was the first time that we ever seen somebody just beg for their life and 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 actually die. Like you didn't seen the police choke people out, and and you know we all then got roughed up a little bit. I mean, the handcuffs too tight and all that. You know, we all been through that, but you've never seen somebody say pleading for his mama and calling his mama, and then and and and, and all that stuff. That was just it was just a different dynamic, and he and he and and he died. And it was just like it was like something I seen on TV. He he's not even here no more. George Floyd is actually. I went to the funeral and seen his casket. Like he's actually gone over a a police officer not getting his foot off his neck when he was begging for his life. That's just different. That's crazy to me. It, it was. I, 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 I've never seen such energy like that before. Even just going there and and just seeing the him in the casket, it was just like it was like the energy was crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was even in a a social media reality TV world that we live in that still shocked us all. And it's hard to be shocked in this world that we live in because everything is filmed. Uh, people will do anything for likes. People will do anything for followers. And still you see this man pleading, not just for his life, but as you said, calling for his mother and watching his life be taken before all of our eyes that shocked us. You know, we we as young black men and women, we're very clear on um, police brutality within our neighborhoods. Right. But even for us, yes, it was validation that this has been happening, but it was still shocking. Yeah. To see, even for us. Yeah, that was that that that, that, that was shocking, man. It was like, and. His mom has passed. You know what I mean? You begging for your mama and she not here. Like, did he, like, he, he, he's on his, like, he's leaving. He, 
All his life was leaving him. His mom was already gone. How did you feel when the officer, Derek Chauvin, you know, he was eventually found guilty, sentenced to 22 and a half years. How'd you feel when that verdict came down? I'm going to be honest with you. When I, when I, um, when I looked at his face, I, 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 I felt sad for him a little bit too. And the reason why is because I felt like it felt so real to him. You know how he's just like, it's like, it's just a surreal moment. It's like, and I have this thing about me that I just like, I'm trying to figure out what's going on in their head. And I can just tell him, he said like, I could just see him saying this. Damn, why do my, why do my, why do my police walkie talkie go off that day? I'm just, I'm just saying to my head like, I know he's like, why my damn walkie-talkie go off? Are you serious? They just gave me 22 years. Why the my walkie-talkie go off that day? Damn. Do you think he was saying that? Or was he saying, I've watched the Rodney King beating. I've watched dozens of African Americans mm -hmm. being killed, beaten, uh, dehumanized on film. And I'm the one who just got found guilty and sentenced to football numbers. You know, was that what was going through his head at the time as opposed to why did my walkie talkie go off? I just feel, I, I feel like at, he felt like, damn, because think about it. That would have never happened. It wouldn't have been a counterfeit. It, it, whatever happened in the store, he, that cop wouldn't have been there. He, and I just feel like that alleviates him from getting that, from being there. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm saying in the sense of like, damn, what? You, you, it's like, it's like, it's like going to the store and then you, you go in there and 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 they get robbed. You're like, damn, why did I choose to go to Seven Eleven today? That's what I'm saying. It's not that you. It's like, damn, like out of all the days, my walkie-talkie went off and now I got to even deal with this shit? That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that he, he I'm not saying that he wouldn't have did what he did. I'm just saying he's like, damn, any other day, it probably would have been a different case. I think he was saying 100%. It would have been a different case. But any other day, it, it, it seems like many of the, the officers in that position are acquitted. And he, you know, part of that was probably running through he, his head as he, well. Like he knew that that what, you know how you, you know how you, <laughs> you know how you know, you know how you know that it is it's, it's on you this time. Like I have this thing, like I hate flying. I hate I hate flying, but but I fly and the plane always land and all that cool shit. It's great, right? But I'm like, damn, I hate flying so much. I say, damn, it's me, huh? I'm gonna be the motherfucker that <laughs> that the thing say. Boo! Please get your gear. I'm like, I just, it's like, it's just that, it's that, it's that, it's going to be me factor. So I just feel like he, he feels like, damn, I shouldn't have, I, I wish I wouldn't have got that goddamn call. Yeah. I think, he, I, 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 I even think he's saying like, he replanted and saying like, damn, when he was begging for his life, I could have just got, if I would have got off 30 seconds more, damn, I would I still be, I still be here. I, damn, I was, I was on, I was on his neck for three minutes. Like, he has to know that that was too long. Like, I'm, I'm just saying that's what's replanting in his mind. Like, damn, three minutes, Jesus Christ. So it was ten minutes, right? Three or ten? It, it, it was nine and change. Okay, now look, now you know, damn, you know, he's saying, damn, I could, it could have been a, if, if five minutes, he's still alive. He'd have still been if it was just five minutes. He has to re replan that time that had. He's be playing time in his head. Yeah. I mean, he got 22 years to think about it. Yeah, th that's for sure. Man, yeah, you know, and you don't see that too often where uh, an officer of the law is, number one, found guilty, but number two, actually sentenced to that type of numbers. Um, so that by itself was... You know, it was just, I'm not going to say it was as shocking as the incident, but it was very, very shocking because a lot of people were holding their breath wondering but, but, if this man would be brought to justice. Right. But Sean, you got to understand, man, we rioted for three years after that. Like when, when George Floyd, man, we ain't rioted. We, every day there was a riot. We ain't rioted that long ever. Yeah.
Yeah. They ride that that was the longest ride. I I don't remember a ride. <laughs> we ride it forever. There was no way that they were gonna do they you couldn't have another you couldn't have another ride on top of that ride and COVID. End of the world. <laughs> All right, switch subject for a second. I want to go back to Minister Society. Go ahead. Uh, Tupac. And I, and I forget the guy's name. In I've seen this movie a million times. Vontae Sweet. I forget the guy's name. But um, maybe you, Tupac was, was originally scheduled to, to play the Muslim kid. Yeah, my boy Vontae Sweet. That's my friend. Okay. Uh, did he get the role and yes. have an argument with the... So Tupac actually got that role. He actually had the role. He so got, what happened? Because from what I understand, he quit, and there was some type of disagreement with with him and well, the they were in the they were they were, we, they were we was in the we was in the room. Me, Tupac, the cast, Jada, everybody in it. We in the room, and we're reading the script. Everybody's reading, and Tupac is like, ah, man, I can't even, I can't get into it, man, man, this, man, this, this 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 role is shitty, man. What what can I do with this? Man, I can't do nothing with it. And I'm looking like, who, who is this? Like, who is, who, who is this nigga, man? Here I am with my first role, leading role, and hit. I'm like, I'm like, man, who is this nigga, man? Like, for real, like some. Uh, and I think I said uh, at this time he was the Brenda. He was the Brenda type. He was the the Brenda, Brenda got, got a baby. baby. Tupac. He wasn't all eyes on me. Tupac. He the Brenda and the baby one. So um. I'm like, who is this dude? So, so the, the director, Alan, was like, told Tupac, and he's like, man, you acting like a bitch right now, man. Step outside. So, Alan get up, jump up, go outside. Tupac go outside. They whatever happened outside, they did that. Tupac never came back in. Alan came back in. Tupac, mm. I never seen Tupac again until after. We did the the, uh, the video, and that's another story. <laughs> so that was so literally on the set that day. That was the last that you saw Tupac. That was the last time I saw Tupac until we shot the video. Triggers got no heart. Huh. And you said because it's also well known him and Jada, great friends since high school. She was around that same day. Yes. Huh. What was the interaction like with them? Uh, and I read somewhere that you you pretty much said that they they were like brother and sister. They were yeah, I said when when they when um when two when I seen Tupac and Jada, they was wrestling. What you mean wrestling? Like 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 homies, like you know how you wrestle your homeboy, like 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 uh like they were just like wrestling like they were friends. Like just like if if uh like say Jada running and Tupac chase her, and then he grab her and they wrestling like uh, in a fun way, like just friends, fr a friendly way of just uh, their friendly bond of just kind of hanging with each other, clowning. Hmm. Will Smith just dropped a book recently. Actually, it's out now. Um, just came out, and he's dropping a lot of his truth in the book. And you know, he pretty much said that he was jealous of the relationship between his wife, Jada, and Tupac. What, what do you think about that statement, especially you seeing them together? And it, it, it appeared to you for it to be more like a brother and sister relationship as opposed to a romantic relationship between a man and a woman. Yeah, I didn't see, I, first of all, I didn't see a romantic relationship. And I just feel like, um, Sometimes you know, like a like like a gay person that can be a friend with a girl, and yep. and and that's like the best friend. Like maybe maybe from a sense of there, he was probably jealous. Like man, he because bet the, the the best friend get to do things that the best friend is just different. They they can fight in them, they talk. It's like a different kind of dynamic, and maybe that's what he was jealous of. Maybe he was jealous that Tupac and and um Jada had that kind of dynamic in a friendship, and they probably didn't have that there because of sexual relationship is probably different from a friendship kind of relationship between a man and a woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I'm not jealous of like I'm don't I'm not putting in no book I'm ever jealous of no no man. Like that's that's 
you I, to me, I'm always be secure within myself. I'm not finna be, you know what I mean? Like me. You, Jada and Will, they have really in the last few years um <laughs> been extremely open and honest about that relationship that they have. Been married for over 20 right. years. Uh they I, I, at best, I would say it's a it's a non conventional relationship that they have. Um, the, go they're ahead. Just, they're just being they're, they're just being honest when the whole world isn't. That's all. It's just a different. Like everybody else, you know how everybody else just got side chicks and doing stuff. They're doing the same thing. It's just more a secret. They said hey, they figured out how to say, "Hey, man, like, man, we kind of like what we we are. We kind of like what we like. Let's just be open with it." Opposed to Opposed to everybody in the world just having uh, side chicks and 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 um, a second phone and all that kind of stuff that maybe they just say, hey man, let's just let's just be honest. Maybe everybody else in the world is not being honest. Maybe that's what's the prop. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe nobody's honest. I, I guarantee you, ain't ain't nobody ain't you can you can go to ain't nobody just gonna give their phone to their girl and, and vice versa and give them the passcode and walk away. Bet. <laughs> Bet. Yeah, I mean, they, they have been extremely brutally honest about that relationship. Um, even even J Jada dropped a new word on the world. She said she had an entanglement. Um, that I got caught everybody love up. on the new entanglements. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not sure what's going on, but at the end of the day, shout out to them. Open relationship or not, um, it works for them. They're yeah. still together, and they seem to genuinely love one another. Yeah, that, and 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 that's all. That's that's all that matters. You gotta make your you gotta make yourself happy. Sometimes we we do things for other people and not yourself. You know what I mean? What's the what is the how do you really feel? You know what I mean? How do you really feel? Like, are you forced to be with one person? Is that what you are? See, your body don't your body don't lie. When you're hungry, you go eat, right? Your body yeah. say, I'm hungry. When you got to blink, you blink. When you yarn, you yarn. When you see a new piece of girl, your, your, your body reacts and lets you know, hey, mm, shit, like it. Yeah, but it, I mean, here's the deal. We, in a world we live in, it's hard to be honest, that, that brutally honest. Yes, that's the problem. And and I think that when when we're watching this couple, who we've been knowing for so many years, um, separately and together, um, there's been rumors out there, and now they're just kind of like effort. This is the way we live our life. We're good with it, and we're just gonna keep living our truth. Sometimes the truth is just uncomfortable for people. So I tell people, I, I tell people all the time. I tell, I, I, and this, I said, if you take, if you take sex out of it out of the relationship maybe things can work that's the only thing that people really break up about is somebody saying they cheated right that money that money so if you could take if you could take if you can if, if if cheating no longer can affect you which what i'm trying to that, that's where i'm at mentally like if cheating can no longer affect you then how to, then you can you can your relationship can last yeah you just gotta I, be. You just gotta be strong enough to understand that if you think you're gonna be the woman and she ain't gonna never get no dick ever again in her life, in her whole entire life, just just the, just the last dick she gonna ever have in her life, then you're very confident, <laughs> <laughs> very arrogant. I mean, it's possible, but could, do you really? I, and I always say, and I always say this: like you, Will Smith, or you, uh, Floyd Mayweather, or vice versa, right? Say, say this: you, you want to do all this, get all this fame, to just have one vagina. You could have, you could have, you could have worked that super uh, at Ralph's and had one piece of. <laughs> Why am I doing? I'm doing all this, to get, get all this glory to just, just be with one girl. Could have worked it. Could have worked that. Uh, um, you could have worked that AutoZone and did that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Um, uh, you spoke with Kendrick Lamar at NTV once. Yeah, and um, you know, he gave you 
major props. You know, you guys were discussing the influence um, that Minister Society had on him growing up. Right. And he said, you know, I like Kane. Everybody, you know, loved O, o Dog. But for him growing up, he was really attracted to the character Kane. What was that like coming from arguably the best, if not one of the best new era rappers that really gave it up to you in that performance? Man, that was dope. I was like, I, to, to to have that kind of impact on Kendrick and it just, it just, it just made me, it, it, it let me know that I left my stamp. It's not how much you do in life, it's what you do. And to leave a, this is what I do know. If I don't do nothing else in my life, I left a mark. That's yeah. incredible. That's that's that no do you know how hard it is to get um a classic? You can do a lot of movies, but do you know how hard it is to get a classic when the one that people that it's still on TikTok right now. The new generation is is still saying Kane and Old Dog. In menace to society today, it's like it won't die. No, but that's when you know. First of all, the truth doesn't it doesn't lie, and it gave a very accurate depiction of what it was like growing up in the inner city as a young black man, and I think people resonate with that movie especially if you are a person of color, you know, it's your truth. It just so happens that you guys made a film about it, but you could be in the hood in the Bronx or in the hood of Arkansas um, or anywhere around the world. But when you watch those characters on screen, you can say, I identify with Old Dog. I identify with Kane. You guys really showed what it was like to grow up in the inner city as young black men. Um, after 30 years, because this movie's got to be 30 years old now, what is your like? What do you think about the impact that Minister Society has left on the world? Like, do you sit home sometime and be like, damn, like I, I didn't know it was going to impact the world, our culture, the way that it did. This is what I didn't realize. I didn't know people were saying, this is what throw me off when people say, you raised me. I never thought, like, I just thought, okay, movie, iconic, great. But people come up to you and say, I was, you raised me. I learned how to, I got my first 5.0 5 because of you. I, did, I got my first beeper. You got me wearing guest jeans. Like, you, I was raised off of, I was raised off of you. You raised me. I'm like, Jesus Christ, never knew that. I just, I, I, the impact is real. Yeah. And, and it, it has, it has impacted this culture for the last 30 years and it ain't going nowhere. Man, it's crazy, right? I know, right? Yeah. I mean, it really, it really has. Um, you know, you briefly talked about this earlier in terms of that opening scene you and Old Dog walk into that Korean store and the shop owners say something to the effect, I feel sorry for your mother. And that was it. Yeah. Um, this happened, or that movie came out, if I'm correct, right around the time that Latasha Hart. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you remember yes. that case? When they, they killed the little girl, yeah. They killed the little girl. In the Korean um, yeah. shop, yeah, the jury did their part. You know, they convicted the Korean store owner, and the judge, instead of sentencing this person, gave her a slap on the wrist. Um, you know, I believe she got off with something like time served, and it was further more a slap in the face to our community. Then comes the Rodney King beaten right after that. Um, you know, many people look at that scene in the movie as kind of a, a prelude or kind of a mirror as to what was going on right. in society. Right. 
you know, can you can you see it from that point of view? Like this is exactly the message that we were trying to show the world. Yes, I see it that way because you got to understand. I grew up where it was just like that, where the Korean owners they always thought that you know they were they were always quick to to think we were stealing and then for some reason we always for some reason we always thought they could do karate or something cuz in the <laughs> store no nah, it's weird cuz in the store they always like they always be, be do some quick shit like uh, like like you you you, 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 you get that out there, you, I, you, you like man I, I just don't kick me you feel me like yeah i mean um I think that in many neighborhoods across the across the country, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it when when you watch that movie and you see that opening scene, and I'll never forget the first time I watched that movie. Me being a young black man, I was like, "Oh my God, they got it right." They <laughs> right. Got yeah. It right. Like, like just the little subtleties of walking through the store, and every time you look up. There's a person that just happens to be standing a few feet away, acting right. like they're not watching you. Right. You know, I, I change aisles. Yeah. Same person. Like, I just see you looking. To... Like, damn. I like, like, come on. Like, can I just? Yeah. Yeah. It was. It, it was crazy, and it was such a powerful opening scene. You know, it, and then, like I said, um, two years before that, Latasha Harlins is killed. After that, Rod. Rodney King beaten that the whole world saw. It, it just felt like that movie was right on time. Um, do you think, or was it ever discussed to your knowledge that they would ever do a remake of Minister Society? And if they, if it was a remake done, who would play Kane in your opinion, and who would play Old Dog? If, if they ever did, which I don't think, it can't be done. No? Can't nobody do that. How? Who could? Like, that's, it's too many, it, it's too, it, it's, it, it's, th that's too hard to redo. That energy, it, it, the energy was the, the energy of you have the 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 um the choices you make as a you mean trying to do the same thing going to liquor store that you just redo it how <laughs> yeah how I mean so to your knowledge it was never discussed about they tried doing... they, 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 there's no minister society without what definitely not doing one without me. So they tried to do they they it, it was talked about but they was like how do they do it it was like everybody had been trying to do that story like they say New Jack City you know how they always say well, New Jack City too it man Lee Nino is only one Nino Brown leave it alone it's only one old dog only one Kane leave him alone don't mess yeah. with classic speaking of classics um, R I P AJ Johnson, another one that we lost way too early. Another brother who was funny as hell. Um, what I didn't know is that he had a small scene in Minister Society. Yeah. Did you have the opportunity to spend a lot of time with him? Yes, you. I, I got him the role in that. You got you got AJ Johnson the role in Minister. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. So, um, I, with, so AJ came. AJ came up to the set to see me, and somebody didn't show up to do the scenes or whatever. And I told the huge brother, uh, "Let my let my nigga uh, let my let AJ do, let he he can handle that. He can do it. He funny. He this. He he can handle that." And then Alan was like, "You sure?" I said, "Man, he got it." And um, Alan was like, uh. Told him to uh, come on. Uh, took him to wardrobe, put him in the stuff, and it was it was it happened. He says it. I, he he speaks on it. I think he did a a Vlad TV. He 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 actually spoke on it on Vlad. Yeah. He said Tyron Turner got me. Tyron Turner was the one. 
because he came up there to see me. So you've been knowing you've been knowing AJ for a minute now. I've been knowing AJ for 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 over twenty some years too. Yeah. How did y'all two meet? Just on the scene out there in LA? Yeah, we met. We met at a. Uh, we met. Uh, my boy Vontae Sweet was the first person to introduce me to him. Though, the one that played the Muslim in um. Yep. In uh, Minister's side, he introduced me to to uh, Vontae. I mean. Uh, AJ a long, long time ago. And then me and AJ just kind of more ended up uh, hanging out more than him and Vontae did. You know how that happens sometimes. You like. You know, it, it's just so unfortunate because we're sitting there and we're talking about AJ and, um, you know, like I said earlier, it, he, they, they're just going too early. Doesn't They're make really any... going too early. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know what the cause of death. Some people say it's possible that that um, drugs were involved. You know, but I, it's not um, confirmed or anything like that. But you just looking over your life and the interact. You, you have been, you know, had major relationships with so many people who are not here. Um, and 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 who have left here just in the last couple of years alone? How how does that even make you feel? Do do you do you feel blessed for having known them in the first place, or are you looking at it the way so many of us are? It's like my God, like it, they're just leaving here way too early. Does it make you happy or sad? It makes me understand that. Life is real because a lot of times, like I'm talking to you right now, I just feel like nothing can happen to me. I like you feel normal, you're breathing good, you feel you don't you don't feel like life is out of you. You don't feel close. Like how does life leave? It doesn't it doesn't mathematically add up. How does it just and leave out of you? So it's confusing. It's like what? Well, how do you just die? And that shows you, you just die. You just die. AJ was here. I remember him. I remember laughing with him. I remember the whole thing. He's dead. I When's remember, the last time you saw or spoke to him? Probably like six months ago. Wow. I seen, I seen Zeus. He's dead. I'm like, how do you just see these people and then they're just gone? That shit is just like, it just put you. How, in, it, it, how was you with um, Michael K. Williams? Did you know him? Met him a few times. Thought he was an incredible actor. He's another one. Gone. Like, they, just gone? Like, DMA. It's like, you will never see, like, you, you'll never, like, it don't matter how powerful somebody is. You'll never see him again. You'll never see Prince. You'll never see Prince ever again walk this street ever. Whitney Houston ever. As big as they were, you'll never see him. How does that work? <laughs> like that's a that's really a real thing. You die. Yeah. Yeah. Every day is precious, man. Every day is precious. You know, Sam Jackson was another. You know, at that time, he wasn't the Sam Jackson that we know today, but he's another huge A-lister that had a small part in Menace. Um, at that time, Kane, that was the younger version of Kane um, during that shoot or that scene that Sam Jackson was in. But did you ever get a chance personally to meet and hang out with Sam Jackson either on that set or after? No. To this day? To this day. Never hung out with him. Never crossed paths. Never crossed paths. That's weird, huh? Yeah, it really is. That's weird how you can not cross paths with certain people in, in, in the world, but you in the world of them. I've run across Denzel. I've run across Larry Fishburne. Like I've run across some. Hmm. Before I let you go, Tyron, and um, you know, you have been you've been great to conversate with. 
What are you working on these days? What what can we look forward to? Um, right now I just finished a television pilot that I'm that I just wrote with my friend Preston. It's it's um it's it's a very interesting project. It's a I'll put you like it's a about a a, a black teenage kid that's a lawyer. That's all I do. And 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 it tackles the things that go on in the world today. Got you. And um like I and I got Fatal with Hillary Swank and Michael Ely on, on HBO Max right now. Yep. And um I'm currently waiting for the script to get greenlit. Uh it's called Free Agents that I'm supposed to be doing with uh my boy Dion Taylor, um, Fifty Cent's also attached as a as a uh, uh, a star and um, one of the producers and stuff like that. Um, and just waiting for that to get uh, together, but that should be next on my slate. What do you prefer most, the writing or the acting side? Acting side. So that's where your love is. I love to it. this day. There's something about that camera, man. It just it's it's something about moving people. Like writing, you 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 see your words come alive. But to, when you when you're moving people, when you when you see how you affect people, it's, it's something. It's just it, it's something about it. Tyron, it was a pleasure speaking with you, and you know, really picking your brain on current events and so much of your history and in the gifts that you've given to this world. So um, I thank you, and on behalf of the Vlad television audience um you know i thank you in advance man because appreciate I you man this interview is going to be um well received thank you man appreciate you man my brother